Last year, Cabinet approved the construction of the nuclear multipurpose reactor to replace the current Safari 1 reactor. The Safari 1 reactor has been operating since 1965 and is scheduled to retire in 2030. Let's get a full understanding now of uh, how this process works and uh, what it means for South Africa. We speak to Lois Kyabashe, CEO of uh, the South African Nuclear Energy Corporation. Mr. Kyabashe, thank you very much for your time. So what's the progress? Are we well on course to replace this Safari 1 reactor? Thank you very much, uh, Tolly, and uh, greetings to the viewers at large. Um, let me start off by saying that uh, you've expressed it very well that the Cabinet gave approval to commence the project of uh, the multi-purpose reactor as a future replacement of Safari. At mm. this point in time, Safari is operating very well and safely, and uh, we are aiming and we are well on course to ensure that um, the MPR um, does dovetail with Safari, and uh, it continues uh, the operations of NEPSA into the horizon. Yeah. We are well on track. We are well on track uh, in that uh, the milestones that we've set out, like the issuing of the request for information that we did yesterday, was aimed to be issued in this financial year, and we are well on course. The purpose of a nuclear reactor, Mr. Kyabashe, for those of us who are not au fait, uh, with uh, the energy space, what is the purpose of a nuclear reactor? The uh, multi-purpose reactor and even the safari reactor that we have um, in our midst today is um, primarily to assist with uh, nuclear-related research. Secondary to that um, is uh, the generation and the production of uh, what is called isotopes, which is really some ingredients that are used both in the um, nuclear medicine sphere mm -hmm. uh, for cancer detection and cancer therapy, as well as to use in the industrial space for non-destructive testing. The third item is also to do some material testing um, by irradiating them with nuclear um, to see how they behave afterwards and uh, how we can actually strengthen the materials to have strong materials in different spheres of operations. And lastly, we also do use the nuclear reactor of this nature to actually characterize some of our raw minerals um, into the future. Yeah. That's really the essence and the fundamental. Very interesting indeed. And so the one that's currently in operation and is due to retire in 2030, it's been in operation since 1965. Uh, talk us through the... <laughs> The complications here, if you are unable to meet that deadline of 2030. Thank you. Let me correct one uh, statement, uh, what you've uttered, God, is that um, we are not setting to retire the Safari reactor in 2030. Okay. However, the, the work that we are doing is uh, meant to ensure that uh, there is dovetailing so that when we retire Safari ultimately, the MPR is fully commercially operational. Because if we don't meet that deadline, and talking now to your last question, if we don't meet that deadline of ensuring that there is that seamless transition, it means that um, we might lose the market position for the, for the isotopes that we do generate and sell profitably into the local and the global sphere. So it is very crucial that uh, we have that overlap of the current safari and the future NPR. Yeah. The cost to the taxpayer, sir. You will know that uh, money is always an issue when uh, we are talking about a replacement of huge projects of this nature. Uh, so what is the estimated cost to replace this uh, nuclear reactor? That is a valid concern, Colin, that um, the taxpayer might be concerned, but at this point in time, we don't foresee any money that should be driven fundamentally to drive this process. However, what we are doing with the request for information, we are seeking um, to understand what the market can offer in terms of the cost as well as the funding mechanism for projects of this nature. Because the intent here is to make sure that the isotopes that we do sell are the ones that, and the research that we do conduct are the ones that actually fund the project, especially at the execution phase. 
as you might know with projects of this nature, the initiation and the project development aspect usually has to be, is the cost that has to be incurred by the ultimate user and uh, probably by the shareholder as well. But overall, the bulk cost, we foresee that uh, this will be funded through a commercial approach and we are waiting for the RFI to come back to us in about 30 days and indicate exactly what are the funding mechanisms and the funding streams that are available to us to, to pursue going forward. So this is not market binding that, what, that was sent out yesterday. Mm. This is really to seek information as the word says request for information. It's not at the proposal stage yet. Potential funders? Who might those be? Yes, I, I would not like to put the uh, cat, uh, the cart before the, the horse <laughs> in the sense that um, there are many funders out there, those you know and those that you don't know. And I wouldn't like to put uh, the ones you don't know at a disadvantage at this point in time. But I must say that the return of the RFI will really set us on a much better path to understand what is available to us. All right. Uh, that's uh, the CEO of the South African Nuclear Energy Corporation, Loiso Jabashe speaking to us about uh, the update as to whether or not we are on course to replace the Safari 1 reactor and um, uh, making a correction there that it's not going to necessarily retire it's simply you know getting an update and making sure that uh, we progress as a country